Hello there people, uh, Mark here. Uh, today we're going to have another tutorial on Zebra. And specifically we're going to be concentrating on the MSEG. Basically we're going to be looking at every parameter in the SEG, including velocity, attack, loop, release, the timeout function, the trigger functions, and the presets. Now something I should say to you before we go any further is please go over and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Basically just so you don't lose or miss any future tutorials of which I generally put up one a day. Okay, um, that's the address right there by the way. So let's have a look at this. Let me just get a simple patch up. Okay, that'll do. Now, what we have here is the MSEG, multi-stage, multi-segment, envelope generator, whatever you want to call it. There's four of them. And these four MSEGs can all and are all independent of each other. So what that means is you could have all four of them controlling the same, say, controlling the tuning via the matrix here. But all running completely different patterns, so getting different effects. Now, the preset section here, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. Click on the preset. You'll have the factory MSEGs. You've got envelopes, gates, and sequences. Oh, sorry, steps. So if I press... I put an envelope in, and we use it to control, say, the tuning, MSEG1. Now that's it doing that on seconds. I'll explain this in a moment. But you could also have a gate pattern, which is that. And you can have a step type pattern. And anything else you can think of. Now I'm just going to initialize this so we've got a kind of flat pattern to work with so that I can show you the rest of this stuff. So what we also have over here is our time unit. Now anyone who's been into production for any amount of time will understand what this means. 16s basically means that it's going to run at 16 speed. 8s, 8 quarters, quarter notes and seconds and seconds. So if I run this at 16s Okay, if I slow it down to quarters. You can see it's slower, and notes are slower still. And seconds is slower still, or real time, should I say. Which is probably a bit slower. Basically, the sixteens, the quarters and the notes, they are all um, tempo matched, whereas seconds isn't, it's real time. So the next thing to look at is this section here. Now velocity, it basically means that if we have an envelope, as you can see it's got a high velocity there and a low velocity here. So depending on the setting of this velocity, you will hear a different type of sound. Now let me just try and make this a bit easier to see or to hear by doing this. Okay, it's not the best patch in the world because it's the, this, the global F LFO over here is ramping up the, um, the cut off. Let me just see if we can change to that. Let me find a better patch to do this with. Okay, so just on this initialized patch you'll hear it. So I've got the MSEG controlling the volume. We've got a velocity of high and low here and we've got the velocity turned up here full positive. So as you can hear, when it hits the low velocity there, 
So if I do that the opposite, it should be the opposite. This high one should be low and the low one should be high. Okay, so you can understand what's happening there. Now, the attack, the loop and release are all to do with speed of the playhead. So let me just add a couple of points here. And let's just make this the loop section. And I'll explain what I'm doing here in a minute. Oops, that should be... Um, Okay, so we've got a little loop there now. So if I play it on quarters, but increase or decrease the attack, that will affect the speed of the playhead before the loop section. So just watch this. So when it's down, it's slow. When it's up, it's fast. The loop knob basically defines how quick the playhead moves within the loop. So watch it. Fast. Slow. And the release is how fast it moves once the notes finish playing. So watch this. Speed it up, slow it down. So really slow. Speeding up. So that's pretty easy to understand, I think. Now down here we've got three different sections. These are called the editor switches. This is the editor page here. This first one is called single, this one is called shift, and this one is called draw. Single will allow you to move a handle, but without moving any of the other ones. So if I move, move this one, no matter what I do, it doesn't move that one, it doesn't move that one. Can't affect it. Shift, which is this one, means that when I move this, everything to the right will shift. There you go. And the final one, draw, means that I can move multiple handles vertically, not horizontally. So if I do this, you'll see them move vertically, but they won't move horizontally. It may be better to show you if I make some more. So they can move, I can move them vertically, but not horizontally. Just up and down, multiple. Okay. Okay, now just some fine points about the editor page. Um, how to create a new handle, hold down alt, left click, job done. How to get rid of that handle, right click on it, remove point. I believe that will be Apple and left click on a Mac. Now these lines between the handles can be curled. If you click left click on it, you see it turn yellow. Move it up, bends down like that, so you can get a really defined envelope, I guess. Left and right. Gives it this S bend. Let me just so left, right, left, right. There we go. To zoom in and out, just come up to the numbers, left click, drag down to zoom in, drag up to zoom out. Left and right, just grabbing the numbers, left clicking and moving left and right. Now there's a couple of context menus. If I right click outside the envelope, you get all of this. It's basically snap and quantize functions. Mess around with them to learn them. And if you right click on a handle, you get remove point, loop end, and that's pretty much it, or start point, loop start. So that's it. If you double click on one of these lines, it straightens up like that. So that's pretty much it. The best way to learn this is just to mess around with it. Go crazy, have some fun. Just Even just with a strange sound, 
a basic sound, I mean. You can get some pretty funky things happening if you just mess around for a little bit. Let's get rid of some of these. If I hold Alt down and just click over these, left click, they will all disappear. Double click in here and it gives me the whole thing. Press play. So you can start just messing around, get all kinds of weird rhythmic stuff going on. It's just a case of adventure, really. And that's just the initial, obviously, that's why it sounds so bad. But um, I hope you learned th something from that. Remember and go to www.zebratutorials.com and subscribe there for all future videos so you can get an email and you also get, if you subscribe, you'll get access to the videos that aren't shown on YouTube or anywhere else, only to subscribers. So you've got to subscribe to get that link and you'll get one of those every week. Okay, thanks for watching.